big trade export deals. And above all, a stronger economy means that businesses are much more likely to take on new staff. More investment means more growth. More growth means more employment. That's why everything we're doing is designed to get behind business. Do you know, do you know right here in Cowan, Luke, in your electorate, 14% of the private sector workforce in your electorate right here work for firms that have a turnover between two and $10 million a year. They will get a tax cut from July 1. That'll be more money in the pockets of those businesses, in the, in the, in the accounts of those businesses, which they will, as businesses do, they'll invest and they'll use it to grow and they'll hire more. They won't get that tax cut if uh, the Labor Party is elected, needless to say. They're not, uh, they're not very business friendly uh, nowadays. Uh, they're taking business on. Well, we're right behind you and all of the employers here. But particularly, we want to talk to the young people here. Now, Lee, where's, where's Nathan? Where is he? You're here, Nathan. Come over here, Nathan. Come on. Now, Nathan, this is Nathan's place. Nathan, you're, you, Lee works for you. He started off as an intern. Uh, you, you went to your... Well, let's, let's get Lee to tell his story first. Hi, my name's Lee. So I attended Mitre Day College and yeah. I had, when I finished, I was aiming to go into university. And just before I went in, waiting for my results, I got a call phone call off Nathan saying they were taking on apprentices. Did you want to give it a crack? So I went in one day and never turned back since. And um, I did my three years with Colgan's through learning carpentry and also a various amounts of different trades that we've got within Colgan Industries. And three years later, I finished my apprenticeship, got my certificate, and with the company we have today, I've had the opportunity to move up the ranks and here I am today. Fantastic. So, Nathan, you've had... Well done, Lee. Nathan, you've had great success with bringing young people like Leon yeah, as interns and then taking them through as apprentices and bleeding hands. Tell us how you've done that. Um, well, look, we're, ours is a very traditional apprenticeship system, interns, and it's worked very well for us, including um, Lee and another guy being supervisors, Jonathan, somewhere, and then two other... Where's Jonathan? In... <laughs> there he is. Over here. Good on you, Jonathan. Um, There's that handsome fellow hanging back. You should be in the front row. <laughs> All right, keep going. Anyway, look, it's, uh, look we love training yeah. because yeah. Uh, it's the way we replenish our workforce yeah. and because um, we've got a spread of people that are obviously at all ranges of the thing. So, yeah. look, it really is just a way uh, we, let me say it again, we enjoy having the apprentices around. It brings youth into our company. Yeah. It brings the skills that we want to be passed on. And um, at the same time as we're building a workforce that can just keep, you know, growing and growing and growing. So. <laughs> That's fantastic. Well, a big, a big part, well, well done to you, and, and thank you very much for gathering us all here together at Colgan. Now, let's talk, we've got a job active provider here. Where is, where are you? There you are. Come, come up and have a, let, let me, Murray, just, um, as you know, uh, a big part of our budget and a big part of our national plan for economic uh, growth is the PATH program. And what that is really doing, Nathan, is picking up off your experience of employers like yours who recognise that a lot of young people who are unemployed... Do you know a third of people who are unemployed in Australia are under 25? So youth unemployment is, depending on which part of Australia you're in, around double that of the overall unemployment rate. So it's a very big issue. And the key is to get people, young people, into work, to get them the the experience of work, getting up, turning up, all of that. And so the PATH program is designed to offer about 240,000 young people some training. Uh, that's the P in PATH, the preparing, some digital literacy, job training, and then to find them an internship, perhaps with an employer like Colgan, uh, and then provide them an incentive to do that, of course, and then as some incentives for the employers to take them on full time. But the, the key thing is to ensure that they become more employable. Mm. Now, tell us about how you think your company and your experience in the Job Active Network, how you think that will work. Yeah, so certainly um, one of our challenges um, with people who are, I suppose, more long-term unemployed young people 
is just getting them to see the benefits that that work has. You can't you can describe that to someone, but you really need to experience it. So certainly the things that stood out um, for us uh, that would be eagerly awaiting for as a job active provider is around the not just the employability skills, but certainly the internship of up to 12 weeks, uh, where people and young people really get to experience the benefits uh, of working beyond just the financial benefits, but the social inclusion, um, you know, the, the, the positive discipline and routine from work. Um, because for us, one of our biggest challenges as a job active provider is certainly raising the aspiration of some young people yes. where maybe they haven't had that example in their life. So certainly that's, that's a really positive aspect. Opening up their doing. horizons. I mean, Lee, you were saying, talking about that earlier, about the importance of doing different things and variety. Now, th thank you for that. Now, I, Lucy and I have, got a, uh, have started many businesses over the years and employed many people, including many young people. And one of the things that we've always been very keen about and interested in is the way in which social capital and social networks through clubs and associations help young people get into employment. Now, Lachlan, tell us about how the, foot, the football club that you're president of, how you've used that as a means of creating the opportunity for young people to get a job. Because this, what this what the, and the message here for anyone who's watching, is there are all sorts of good reasons to join the football club, and one of them is to get a job. But go on and <laughs> tell us the story, Lachlan. Um, well, this year I've uh, been, uh, been lucky enough to be president of the uh, Wanneroo Amateur Football Club, uh, football club in the uh, electorate of Cowan. And uh, one of the good things is I think I've uh, ex helped, uh, well, I'm learning myself on the job, but I help uh, young kids who come down from school, finish school, have nothing to do, they want to be a part of a community still, uh, still want to play some football while they're young. Uh, but unfortunately, a few of them don't have jobs. And that's where we farewell viewers on ABC and WA. If you want to continue watching this, you can do so on ABC News 24. The way I've helped them get back involved is introducing them to some employers, either through sponsorship or other players at the club. And uh, it gives them, you know, a sense of, uh, well, I really want to help out. I don't want to let him down because he's introduced me to this. And... Uh, the football club also, as we talked about before, it's a good way because um, everyone sort of gets involved. And as I said, if you don't rock up to training on time, like if you don't rock up to work on time, you get punished. If you don't wear the correct attire, it's a, they're not bad punishments. Uh, it's just running a lap or something like that. Don't think we uh, hurt the young kids who come down. But, yeah, so it's good that um, I think it, you know, it gives them a responsibility in the uh, area and uh, then they go forth. And uh, I've seen a few kids... Uh, grow and develop and become better people for it. I mean, it's only nine weeks in, but it's already some development from them. But uh, just keeping the kids involved and caring about them off the field as well, I think, is a bigger responsibility than on the field. Fantastic. Well, that, that is, that is, that's, that's great work. Now, Ben, father of Ellie, tell us about how you, how you focus. You and Ellie talk. Ellie, you're in final year at school? Yeah, right. Get looking, planning to be a primary school teacher. Primary school teacher. Well, that's Wonderful. that's one of the most it's one of the most important jobs there is. You'll be you'll be changing the world one little one little kid at a time. Hopefully. Hopefully. But Ben, you and Ellie talk a lot about how to be prepared for work and as a just a you know, a parent's perspective, a dad's perspective. Okay. Fortunately, I have a history where I was well looked after starting out. Um, I've been given a traineeship, so I came through that, got a job eventually at IBM, and I realised very early on that if you don't grab a chance and don't get an opportunity, you can never start to function. So I've tried to prepare my daughter to say, no one owes you a job. You can't just front up and present a resume and say, I'm here, go for it, you know, I'm, I'm the best thing, you have, you have to employ me and give me a million dollars. So very much in her, we're trying to build, you have to make sure that when you turn up, you put in an, an honest day's work. That's the whole idea. If someone invests in you, they get something back, and you have to turn up on time, and we're looking for putting those things into kids, into obviously a daughter, getting them to do voluntary work, um, and then hoping that someone in employment will give them that chance because you have a very thin resume when you start out in year 12. Yes. So you're looking for someone in business to so say, I'm willing to give a gamble on this person. And as you're saying there, the internship thought of that 12 weeks, and I think I had a 12-month one when I started out. 
And that's where we've got to leave that. The Prime Minister hosting his own Q&A session there. He'll be holding a media conference within the next hour or so and we'll bring you that live here on ABC News 24. Uh, but your next bulletin is coming up right now.